You mentioned, Mr. President, our economic relationship and trade. Do you know since the Australia-US Free Trade Agreement came into force in 2005, two-way trade has grown by over 50 per cent. The, the United States does have a trade surplus with Australia uh, of uh, $25 billion. Uh, it's your third largest trade surplus with us. Uh, but, you know, we know it works for both of us. The two-way investment has more than doubled in the past decade. It was worth around $1.1 trillion in 2016. Again, boosting jobs and growth in both our nations, both our economies. And today, we've agreed on some new initiatives that will deepen this relationship further. We're seeking to expand transparent and competitive global energy markets, cooperating on high quality infrastructure investment in the United States and in the region. We've spent a lot of time talking about infrastructure, including urban infrastructure, a, a subject, Mr. President, of course, uh, you have a lifetime of experience in, and the leadership you're showing on infrastructure in the United States is, is being admired around the world, and Australian companies uh, and Australian experience is there to help, as, uh, as, as, as you know, and is already operating here. A number of our infrastructure players are very active in the US. Uh, we're obviously working to intensify our cooperation on digital trade. Bob Lighthizer and Wilbur Ross from your side, Steve Chobo, my trade minister who's here with them today, have made terrific progress in that regard. Now, we turn to security. Yesterday, Lucy and I were with General Dunford at uh, the Arlington National Cemetery. And we honoured America's war dead. We honoured an Australian airman who had uh, died in combat in, the New, in New Guinea in the Second World War, who was buried there at Arlington also. And we reminded that all of the freedoms we enjoy, whether it is in our parliament in Canberra or here in Washington in the White House or in the Congress, all of those freedoms have had to be secured generation after generation by courageous men and women defending freedom's cause. Our freedoms have depended on them. And Americans know, as Australians know, that each of us have no better ally. We are mates, a hundred years of mateship. We're working together, as you said, to address the greatest threat to our region right now, North Korea's illegal nuclear weapons program. And I want to welcome and, of course, support Mr. President the new sanctions that have been announced today. And we continue to do precisely the same with our own autonomous sanctions and, of course, enforcing the UN Security Council mandated sanctions. We're working to combat terrorism around the world, helping the Iraqis and the Afghans build up the resilience to hold their countries uh, secure in the face of terrorists. And of course, we both recognise that the prosperity of our region and indeed the world, has been underpinned and in fact built on a foundation of a rules-based order which has been secured by the leadership of the United States ever since the Second World War. That leadership has been critical. And the commitment you showed, Mr. President, when you came out to the region, to the East Asia Summit, to APEC last year, that commitment was so important. It spoke volumes for America's continued commitment to our region, to our part of the world, to the Indo-Pacific, so vital. The, the engine room, if you like, of the fastest economic growth, the most rapid economic growth that we've seen in our times. Now, Mr. President, I want to thank you, as I have um, earlier in our meetings, I want to thank you for the very rare honour you have shown to Australia by naming one of your future littoral combat ships, the USS Canberra. That is what a, what a great symbol of our alliance and our shared security endeavours. What, what an extraordinary statement of commitment. And a, it's worth observing that that ship will be built by Austal in Mobile, Alabama, so you have an Australian company with American workers working, operating in the United States, 
building ships for the, for the US Navy. What a great example of 100 years of mateship. And when you grieve, as you said, you noted at the outset, so do we. So we send our love, our prayers and our condolences to all of the victims and their families of the shocking shooting in the school in Florida. We are mates, we stand by each other, and when we are hurt, we are hurt as well. So, Mr. President, thank you for your warm welcome. A hundred years of mateship, we celebrate a hundred years ago on July 4. John Monash, General John Monash, led American and Australian troops into battle in the First World War for the first time. And we've been side by side ever since. A hundred years of mateship celebrated and a hundred more years to look forward to closer than ever. Thank you very much. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.